finally living the life I've always wanted to live. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't about the money. It was about the lifestyle I was living. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's what most, most of us don't understand until mm -hmm. we really get there. And we're back with another episode of the Ticket to Anywhere podcast. What's up, everybody? These are your co-hosts, Trizzy and Leah. We're two yeah. voices, two views, and two ways to venture anywhere. Yes, absolutely. And welcome. Welcome if you're new here. Welcome if you're old here. We love returning, returning listeners. Uh, today, we had a very special guest who I used to co-host Clubhouse Rooms with. Her name is Debbie. She is the host of the Offbeat Life podcast and consequently has created a brand, the Offbeat Life. You know, it's not just, it's bigger than a podcast, right? Oh, yeah. It's, uh, she's all about helping people live the flexible, free lifestyle that they want to live, whether that's you just want more time, whether you want to travel more, whether you want to work from home. Um, that is what Debbie helps people do. Mm -hmm. And so we brought her on today to talk about the whole gamut of things, how she got her start in being able to provide people with um, remote job opportunities. And she talks about her new series, Trizzy, right? Uh, yeah, her new series is Trying Remote. It's on YouTube, it's visual, and it's pretty cool because she's basically trying all these new remote positions and she calls it being a guinea pig. And then she'll let you guys know how it is. And I'm like, this is crazy. Yeah. Like imagine really cool. you not having like an experience with this position or that position and you're just submitting your resume just to let people know how it's going <laughs> and mm -hmm. to give them the confidence too. I think that's the main thing about her. She's very raw in this episode. And I love that because here I am with a full-time nine to five job, just dreaming to work remote, but then not really realizing how you know of a nightmare it can be sometimes mm -hmm. so it's not really a dream but I think right now though you're just in the ideation stages do mm. you know what I mean because this is how I was two years ago what when did I start really going really remote like 2018 when I came back from Australia right, right? like you're just in like okay how do I do this which when you think about everything, of course, it sounds like a nightmare because it's like you're not doing it yet. Right. True. But you're I think you're prepping yourself mentally at this point. And that's when things are most confusing because you're like, yeah, because I'm everywhere right now. Scatterbrain. So yeah, 100%. Debbie, Debbie also does help you kind of pinpoint um, just the confidence and just, you know, taking that leap and hopefully living the offbeat life. Yes. Yeah. She talks a lot about how she got her start what kind of products and services she offers, like how it's going today, um, the new series that she started and, you know, gives us all that really, that, that big dose of confidence we needed. So we hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we did. Yeah, for sure. So cheers to Debbie, Leah, cheers to you. What you drinking on? Oh man, this green screen. <laughs> Um, I'm drinking a homemade coffee. I have been at the time of recording end of April. I've been sick the past week. And so I haven't had coffee in a week. So, you know, just my little homemade mocha pot espresso shot with um, some Ali'i coffee from Hawaii, uh, from Oahu, Hawaii with that oatmeal, oatmeal cookie flavored oat milk. <laughs> there it goes. Yeah. It's my favorite signature. Yeah. And yeah, I have a uh, jasmine tea latte. It's powder form. I brought I, I brought the packet up here to show you guys. This is what I'd be sipping on oh, sometimes every morning. It's yum, really, yum. Yeah. So you just dump it in there, put put a little bit of hot water to dilute the powder, and then pour, you know, oat milk or almond milk or whatever mm. choice of milk you want. Or you could okay. just use all water, but I like the taste with milk. A little better. cream in it. Cream, quote like unquote, cream, right? Mm -hmm. For sure. Sweet. Well, cheers to the offbeat life. Hey there, it's Trizzy and Leah, your hosts for the Ticket to Anywhere podcast. We created this travel podcast for you, who's just as obsessed with exploring the globe as we are. We each travel a different way and even have different work schedules. But every episode, we aim to widen your worldview, inspire you to consider a destination near or far, or learn from others. With us, you can adventure from anywhere. Keep in touch with us on social media at Ticket Number 2 Anywhere Podcast. 
Remember to connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. Never miss an episode by subscribing to Ticket Number 2 Anywhere Podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Pocket Casts. And hit subscribe to follow our visual podcast on YouTube to keep up to date on our channel. If you find value and enjoy our episodes and special guests, please rate us and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. It means the world to us and helps others find us easier. You can also leave comments or reviews on our YouTube channel or Facebook page. Be sure to search for Ticket Number 2 Anywhere Podcast. Take a screenshot of the episode you're currently listening to, share it on your socials and tag us, or send this episode to a friend if you think it'll be helpful for them. And if you'd like to support us by monetary means, you can do so by buying us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash ticket number two anywhere. Awesome. Well, Debbie from the Offbeat Life, thank you so much for coming on to Ticket to Anywhere podcast today. This is a long time coming, you know, <laughs> from our days of hosting clubhouse rooms together, which feels like decades ago, but I it was know. last year. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So Debbie, I know, I feel like I know a lot about you and very little at the same time. (laughs) So I recently saw that you became a home, oh no, you've been a homeowner, you know, you're the host of Offbeat Life. You now have a new series called Trying Remote. And in, in my research and just knowing you through clubhouse rooms, like photography seems like the career that led you around the world, which is really cool. The fact that you started working for NGOs, um, you know, you help people launch, grow, and monetize their podcasts. You send out a jobs newsletter every week for remote opportunities, which I still get. And I still look through every time <laughs> just in case, right? <laughs> is, is there anything else that, you know, I'd love for you to do a little intro to our guests that may not know you yet. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm really honored to be here. I'm, you know, I'm just meeting Trizzy for the first time, but I've known Leah for a bit, like she had mentioned. So my name is Debbie. I host a podcast called The Offbeat Life, um, which pretty much interviews people who are location independent, remote workers, uh, digital nomads, or online entrepreneurs who literally can go anywhere and work at the same time. And they're not constantly trying to figure out how are they going to keep doing this in the two weeks that they have allotted to them, you know, with their regular corporate job. Um, And that's really how I started because I also was very curious about how I can do this permanently. And when I started in 2017, I was in a job that I've had for almost 10 years. And even though it wasn't a bad job, it also wasn't something that I was passionate about. And I wanted to do something else. And I feel like I needed a different purpose in my life. And I felt like I had done everything that I could in that job. So there was a lot of panic attacks before I realized that I really needed to leave. Um, And that's how the podcast was born. And then eventually, um, it culminated into the website where we have resources is like you had mentioned Leah um, where we help people find online jobs as well because I know it worked for me um, and I was wondering how I could do the same and now four and a half years later um, after all of this we, we started a new YouTube channel that I'm pretty much the guinea pig where I try a new online job or um, online gig every single month because I get a lot of emails from people who are really afraid to take the first sleep. So I'm like, okay, well, I'll see if this is really as scary as it is. And I know it's not the same, but um, I think when you give people a bit of an idea of what it is, it helps them get that, you know, courage that they need to take that first step. So that's pretty much sums up the last few years. <laughs> You're a guinea pig to these new jobs. That's insane. I'm curious to know, like, how has that been going? It's been really interesting, actually. So it's been a while since I actually put out my own resume because I did start applying for jobs and I haven't had um, or I haven't really put out my resume and gotten interviewed since 2012. So that's a very, wow. very long time. Wow. So I, I felt what a lot of people felt when you yeah. do put yourself out there. It's very scary. So I put out my resume. I've gotten interviews. I've found online gigs. Like I tried all of these things and I learned so much about myself and also just putting yourself out of that comfort zone, because I think that's what a lot of people are very much afraid of is fear that you're going to get turned down or it doesn't, it won't go well. You're going to say the wrong thing. You're not 
um, going to make any money. There's just a lot of fears and also misconceptions with a lot of these things. So that's, that's kind of what I'm diving into with a lot of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Have you, um, sorry, are you doing these at the same time, some of these jobs at the same time? And are they in real time or did you like kind of pre- load them and whatnot have you yeah I I did them ahead of time so Uh I published the first one the beginning of April and I was starting to do a few of these like in December of last year um because I'm the type of person that I always need to have um you know a long leeway in terms of my content so I always do things ahead of time but it's it's been it's been pretty interesting so (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah. I'm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm definitely seeing a few of them right now. And um, this is great. Yeah. I hope people take a page out of your book and get inspired to try them also. I think it's a good start into the <laughs> working remote world. Well, as you said, it's trying remote, you know, what are the little things I can do on the side that don't require an office or don't require yeah. a nine to five? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the things that I'm actually trying out is for gigs, especially side gigs that you Mm -hmm. don't really need a lot of experience in a lot of the things that I've been doing. I'm like, I've done this before. How I do this? How do I even start? Well, this is really what inspired me to create these videos was because I get so many questions from people who have never done any remote jobs. And they're like, oh my gosh, like, I can't be a developer. That's right. (laughs) takes years and years of of schooling and also experience or I can't do x y and z because of this I'm like well let's take all of these excuses out of the way Mm -hmm. I'm gonna show you how you can do this even without any experience so yeah no more excuses let's let's do this and I'll show you how that's so great you're like the big ate you're like the ate (laughs) paving the paving the way for those that don't speak Tagalog out there ate Debbie is also fellow Filipina (laughs) but like ate means big sister you know like taking charge lead the way (laughs) exactly that's what you have to do sometimes yeah (laughs) so I was listening to your podcast yesterday on my run because I noticed that you had Jason Moore as your most recent guest. He was yeah. actually, his podcast was actually one of the podcasts that influenced the light bulb in my head to start a travel podcast with Leah. So I was like super pumped that <laughs> you had interviewed him. That was a great episode, by the way. Um, but what would you say in when you first started going like fully remote, what, what were your early struggles with going remote? Honestly, I think it was just not knowing if I could do this. A lot of the stuff that I had gone through was mental, you know, Um, and it was just a lot of fears that most people go through when they start diving into something that they're really unfamiliar Mm -hmm. with. And it was just like, oh my gosh, am I going to be able to survive? Like, especially in the beginning when not a lot of income is coming in, you're like, oh my gosh, I, I cannot live off of this. Right. Um, and how do I supplement this? Is this the right thing for me? Or um, if you've been doing it for a little bit of time and it doesn't feel like anything is happening, then you're like, did I make the right decision? Mm -hmm. So it's just a lot of those things that you think about because obviously we want to do things that we love, but at the same time, realistically, we have to also think about what we can live off of, right? Mm -hmm. Because we don't have trust funds. Usually we didn't win the lotto. So you still have to live off of your or make a living off of something. So that's really what a lot of my fears were when I started. Can I make this realistically something that's sustainable? Um, And then sometimes you make income one month and then the next two months you make nothing. So it's always up and down when you are a freelancer, when you are an entrepreneur. So you always have to constantly think outside of the box about how you can make this more sustainable for yourself. Yeah. So how long did you realize like, oh, I'm okay now? (laughs) I don't think I've 
been thinking that at all. I think it's a constant <laughs> struggle, honestly, if yeah. to tell you the truth, you know, like there's, there's always months where it's really great. And then there's months that it's not. And I think mm-hmm. what I have found and realized is that to always um, have a little nest egg just in case, you yep. know, and always have that savings. Um, and if you can, for example, if you are a remote worker who's a freelancer, um, sometimes it's not always ongoing. So if you can, if you're able to find mm-hmm. a full time remote job so that it can sustain you, um, and if you want to do something on the side that could become a full time business later on, it's always good to supplement both of them so that it's more realistic because I, I hate when people tell you just dive into this willy nilly, don't think about (laughs) the consequences. And then the third or fourth or fifth, or even six months you run out of money. And then Mm. you go back to your regular nine to five day job that you hate. And then you say to yourself, well, this doesn't work. No, it's most likely because you didn't prepare yourself accordingly. Um, to this type of lifestyle, because it's not easy. You know, it's not, Mm -hmm. it's not as pretty as people say it is, um, especially on social media. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Thank you for being so raw. It's like, (laughs) what, especially what I need, because I (laughs) potentially would like to move myself from the nine to five and see what I can do remotely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you're great. You're really good at saving Trizzy. So, and I think you're good at like not spending. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) But that's something, you know, I wish I knew maybe even six years ago when I went off to South America, even though I had saved and saved a ton of money, there's still things I would have done differently. Like I probably would have started volunteering from the start. Like I just would have had a wiser backup plan, but everything is 2020 in hindsight, right? Like now, if I went off to do it again, I would do it the way that I think is perfect, but hundred percent about being prepared and having a plan. I fully agree with that. And I'm glad you emphasize that here because I don't think people, I think people be like, yeah, 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 I have a backup plan. Right. Yeah. But it's, <laughs> it's like, no, really have several backup plans. <laughs> yeah. But, so, but you know what? Oh yeah, Sometimes you have to learn that on your own too, because you know yeah. we all have these mistakes that we need to learn personally. Because I can tell you what to do, and Leah and Trizzy can tell you what to do from their experience, right? Mm-hmm. But sometimes there's a few of us, including myself, who are very stubborn, who would rather mm-hmm. learn on mm-hmm. their own um, than to learn from another person's mistakes. But I wish I could learn more from other people's mistakes. And I think as I get older, I'm trying to trying to figure that out more. But Mm -hmm. again, I think it's also good if you do learn it personally, because once you make that mistake, you're never going to make it. It's so like traumatized. You're like, oh, my God, (laughs) it's so true. (laughs) You people need like scaring into what what is right or what is best, right? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, they absolutely do. So that's a good point also. And it goes along with my favorite phrase on the planet. Like you can lead a horse to water, but you cannot make a drink. So you're like, here's the way, but everyone has got to like experience it for themselves, right? (laughs) Absolutely. I I totally believe that. (laughs) So going along with, you know, the different ways that you make income and, and just like pouring through your site and seeing all the great things that you offer, like you offer lots of digital products and services on your site and under your brand, but how perfect is each one before you decide to like start a new one or they usually like all started at the same time. The offerings are, you know, given out at the same time. I wanted to know how you got started with a lot of them. Yeah, nothing is perfect ever. Yeah. Uh, I am actually, I'm one of those people that I'm pretty impulsive with certain things. So it doesn't matter to me if something is perfect. I just put it out and then mm-hmm. I'll go back and then tweak it or add into it, make additions. Sometimes there's people that give me comments and then I tweak it. Mm-hmm. So I'm more of that type of person than like, wait and wait, and wait, and hopefully things will be perfect and it doesn't get done. So I, I do do that. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. Um, but most of the time I honestly create products, um, due to the fact that I get comments from my listeners mm-hmm. 
or my readers. So that's really where most of the idea comes from. Or um, maybe it's something that I've used myself and I'm like, oh my gosh, this will make other people's lives so much easier. And then I'll include that. And since I already created for it for myself, it just makes so much, you know, it makes it so much easier to um, just include that into my products and then just add logos and then <clears throat> that's it. Okay. I love that because it's the epitome of not waiting for things to be perfect because yeah. things like you said things are never going to be perfect and right I you just have to, to get wait. started I'm very very impatient <laughs> <laughs> so are you allowed to tell us which one is the most lucrative for you at this moment in time <laughs> yeah honestly it's been the podcast all along um I have been making most of my income from my podcast through brand sponsorship has been the number one. Um, and now because I started trying remote, I actually got a writing job that has made <laughs> money now. Like it's actually first now. And then the podcast is wow. second. So because of trying remote, I got this, it's like unbelievable job actually. And I'm like, Oh my God, this wow. is like crazy. So um, yeah, because of this, and again, because of all of this stuff, it's created a lot of um, opportunities for me. Um, and then because of the podcast, I have the brand sponsorships and then mm. I also get hired for speaking engagement. So that's oh. another thing. Um, so it's, it used to be the sponsorships and then the speaking engagement and then the digital products. And then I have my, um, my um, one-on-one -on -one coaching. Mm -hmm. But now it's the writing and then the, <laughs> the, um, the podcast brand sponsorships and then it's the, um, the teaching that I do and then the rest of the stuff. But it's, it's, it's really crazy how it all comes out, you know, of the woodworks, like yeah. certain things. It's a good surprise, I think. <laughs> right? Yeah. So yeah, are you going to keep can... the writing one? Yes. Okay. Because, oh my gosh. It's amazing. Actually. I'm like, I wish everybody could get a job like this because wow. like, it's amazing. Um, and I'm going to talk more about it when I actually, because it was one of those things that I just tried out. It was actually one of the ones that I tried. Um, well, when I sent out my resume just to be like, Hey, I'm just going to send these out. And I got hired. I'm like, wait, this is actually a really great job. And it doesn't take a lot of my time. So I'm like, that's good. Shoot. So I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that's so good. So on a, like a very productive day, including this writing job, how do you see your day going? Like itinerary agenda. Yeah. And on, to piggyback on that, how do you keep so organized yeah. with so many different things? I have a really, I have good people who work with me. <laughs> so um, the reason why I'm able to take this is this um, additional job um, is because I do have assistants that help me. And if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have time to do any of these other things that I do. Like even, um, you know, the speaking engagements that I do, the teaching, all of that stuff, it takes a lot of time out of my day. But um, it, if it wasn't for delegation, delegating all of my, my, uh, my things for the podcast and things for the website, I would not be able to do any of this stuff because it would just be me working 80 hours a week and that would be nothing. Um, and I would just be completely exhausted and I would probably just be focusing on the website or, or the podcast. Um, but because of that, I'm able to include all of these other things and still get a lot of time for myself, actually. Like, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I still get a lot of time uh, for myself, for my husband, for friends and family. So I really love it. I think this is one of the, um, the times in my life where I really feel at peace that things are actually where they, I feel like they should be. You know, when you first start this journey, you think about the moment when it finally feels like this and how you would feel. But it feels so damn good. I do have to say that. Like, it's not because I'm making like so much money. It's right. not because like I have all of these accolades. It's about finally living the life I've always wanted to live. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't about the money. It was about the lifestyle I was living. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's what most, most of us don't understand until mm -hmm. we really get there. You know, I have time for things that I love to do and the things that I do do to make money is what I really enjoy. Like, I love mm -hmm. it so much. So yeah, right now, no complaints. 
everything is damn good. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I love that as well. The fact that you're just like, don't focus on the money part. You really got to focus on your passion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because the money, yeah. I mean, as you said, the money may not come for years, to yeah. be honest. And like, I think that's with any business, you're in the red for like a minimum of two to five yeah. years or something. Right. Yeah. So you're not Absolutely. even actually making any profit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, until that time, if you're a successful business. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, you got to think about, you know, the, the blood, sweat and tears that it takes to get started and launched. And yeah. sustain, sustain, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and that's the key is sustainability, right? Because um, with anything, it could be good and then it could be bad. But I think um, what I've really learned, and I know this is really cliche, but just like having that gratitude with where you are. Um, mm-hmm. And if you don't have that gratitude, then it, it really is, it goes down, right? Because um there's a lot of things that will happen, especially if you're going to go into this lifestyle, that's not the average or the norm for right. most people. And it's not a pretty sight, you know, it may mm-hmm. seem pretty on the outside, but on the inside, especially for you as a person, when it's always up and down, and then you are um, faced with a lot of things to conquer, there's a lot of failures that you have yeah. to go through. It's a lot of soul searching. Yeah. Um, but if you are, or the type of person that could really take the punch. Um, you can see the good um, and learn from the bad and then have gratitude for that. I think um, this is something that is really essential in life. I think whether you do this or, or you don't. So mm-hmm. we got a wellness coach. Add that to your list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we better see that on the drop down menu on the yeah. off life. <laughs> <laughs> dot com. We hope that you're taking some of the, I mean, like you said, you're in Florida right now. I was going to say, mm-hmm. I hope that you're taking some of your extra time to travel a little bit <laughs> or to oh, go yeah. explore. Oh yeah. We're actually going, um, we're going to go to like an Island this weekend. And then I'm surprising my husband. I'm not going to say it too loud, but I'm yeah. surprising him with a little getaway for his birthday um, oh. in a few weeks. So oh. here. an <laughs> island, take us there. We don't yeah. care what island, <laughs> just any island. Any island. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> I want to talk about the podcast side. So Leah and I, what we run into is guests approaching us very generically, like not even saying, hi, Leah and Trizzy. Um, I've listened to your podcast. I love these episodes. They're just hi, I'm this person and we want to be on here. They're bots, like right, yeah. automated CRM system. <laughs> what, what would you say? Sometimes they're bots. Sometimes they're just people who may be just naive with the business and not really knowing how to approach people. So for those who hope to be on a podcast, how would you say the best approach is? This is such a funny question because you know, as I do, um, we, we get a ton of these every single day and I don't even yeah. respond to them. I actually now have an auto like response mm. to them um, because I just don't, you know, we don't have the time of day to kind of explain to them what they should be doing. Right. Um, but like you had mentioned, Trizzy, like if you don't know who the hosts of the podcast is, if you're not putting in their name, if you don't even know what they're talking about, I, I've, I've, I don't even know how many people have come up to me and they're talking about like, I, I, God knows what topic they're talking about. I'm like, this has nothing to do with the yeah. podcast at all. Even if I found you interesting, I can't even put you um, in, in the podcast. So you have to make sure that it's personalized to the host you have to put their names on there you have to make sure it's personalized to the actual show um and also make sure you listen to the podcast if you mention like a specific podcast um episode and like what you liked about that show i would give you bonus points for that because not many people talk about that Mm -hmm. um But yeah, it's funny. I had one person that came to me and I think she was the only person that I responded to be like, not because I wanted her or the the client that she had to be on the show, but because um, I think I was just fed up with all of the, you know, all of these emails. And one day I'm just like, okay, I'm going to respond to one person. And I'm like, hi, you're, you're a PR person. I just wanted to give you a few tips on how to do this, like X, <laughs> Y, and Z, because if you want your client to 
go and get into these podcasts, I think it would be best if you did X, Y, and Z, because what you're doing right now isn't working. Right. <laughs> um, but she was actually really nice. And she was like that. Thank you so much for, for whatever. And then she was like, can you give me more tips? And I was just like, no, not really. Um, I gave you the you can tips. find those tips in my launch and grow your podcast course. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, I think people just copy and paste and there's nothing wrong with that, but you also have to personalize it right there's just certain hundred percent can't write the entire time but like yeah um or they would put the wrong person's name that's oh. really horrible I've had some of that um and then a few of them I actually wrote back I'm like I think you wrote this for a different person even though I knew it was us <laughs> just to give them a heads up yeah but yeah blows my mind these PR folks <laughs> maybe we should switch careers since we actually know what to do exactly <laughs> you know <laughs> all right well do you think it's time Leah yeah all right yeah. this was I, this went by so fast but we yeah, loved having you like on Debbie full of information yeah, yeah. <laughs> so much information yeah so we're gonna get into the T2A Q2A which is the ticket to anywhere quick to answer segment kind of like rapid fire we have four questions. And the first one is, Debbie, why do you travel? I travel because I find it really fascinating to meet people in different places. And um, I, obviously, I travel because of, you know, places to see and do. But for me, it's really the people that I've met. And I've made so many close friendships from that. So that's why. That's my number one. It's the people that I meet. I love that. I'd say that's my number one too. So we're <laughs> on the same page there. <laughs> All right. Second question. Do you have any rituals or routines when you get to a new place? Yes, I sleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the best one. <laughs> I'm always jet lagged. It doesn't matter how short the flight is. And I always try to take the time to take a nap at least because I have to like, you know, like my body has to relax, I think. Because if I just keep going, unless of course there's like a specific itinerary, mm -hmm. I always just take some downtime. And then it allows me to be like super fresh. And then when I do see things, I take it in instead of being tired and going out and not really remembering what's going on. Right. Are you a power napper, like 20 minutes or do you need like hours for your I'm nap? both. I, okay. My friends will tell you, I am a total sleeper. Like I oh. will nap, I will sleep. I can sleep anywhere. I could be on the floor. I could be <laughs> any, like, love sleep. it. I could be on the dirt, sand, whatever it is you give me, I'll sleep on it. <laughs> All right. What items do you absolutely need with you on your trips? Um, a water bottle that's not, um, you know, like the plastic water bottles because on the airplane, I hate, like not on the airplane, but in the airport, I hate paying for like $10 water. Oh, yeah. Um, so I always need to have that. Um, and let's see, obviously my passport because then <laughs> I can't go anywhere. Yes. Um, and maybe some sort of like a GPS or a map, but that's pretty much it. Yeah. Nice. nice. Oh, and money. And maps. money. Yes, money. <laughs> <laughs> and money? <laughs> Currency of many different kinds. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Something. <laughs> All right. Last question of the T2A, Q2A. What would you say is your biggest travel flex? My biggest travel flex? I don't yeah, know maybe something that, that you do well, like better than everyone else or something that you're proud of. Um, eat anything. <laughs> Like you're open to trying new things. That's yes. a massive flex. I, I yeah. love eating new things. Like the, the weirder they are, the more I want to try them. So maybe that's my biggest flex. I oh guess. yeah, that is. Um, so yeah, take me anywhere. I could be, I'm a really cheap date. Like as long as the food is good. So yeah. that's the thing. I don't care how much the food costs as long as it tastes good. Cause you could take me to a Michelin star and the food looks good, but it tastes like and I'm mm. not going to eat it, but no. you can take me to a bodega mm -hmm. and, and the, the sandwich is good or whatever they got going and I will eat it. And I'd rather be there. <laughs> oh yeah. And That's how I, I survived in Japan. I yeah. Lawson's and got their egg salad sandwich. <laughs> Yeah, and Ooh, that yeah, sounds good. That's true too, because if if you're not very picky with what you can eat, you can literally be anywhere, right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you're open-minded. <laughs> okay. So then sidebar to that, what is the weirdest thing? I know weirdest it's cultural, um, but like, what is the, the most interesting thing you've had to eat? I've eaten um, sharks, like a bunch of insects. Oh, um, I've eaten frogs. I've eaten alligators. Chewy. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like thinking about it. I've eaten so many things. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, I'm and impressed. Some of, some of them I don't probably like sometimes I don't even ask what they are. I'm yeah, like, is this probably best? Kill me? Yeah. I'm like, no, it's not. Great. I'll eat it. If you eat it, then mm. I'll eat it. We're good to go. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. What about drinks? Any weird beverages you had to drink? Okay. So this is the thing about me. I'm not a drinker. I'm an eater. So Uh um, I'm not, I'm not really into alcohol. It's not because of anything. I just don't like the way it tastes. So so like, again, I told you if alcohol tasted really good to me, I'd be drunk all the time. Um, (laughs) But um, I think the there's really no weird things I think I've drank I mean maybe there's some concussion like stuff that my husband made that was like really gross but to make things <laughs> healthier that's probably the weirdest stuff I love how the weirdest drink your answer to the what weirdest drinks have you had is <laughs> stuff my husband makes yeah like because sometimes he'll be like oh like drink this this will make you healthy I'm like this tastes so gross no so this will make you healthy <laughs> Oh, so you said about green juices, all the pressed juiceries and stuff, huh? Yeah, yeah. We were one time we were in this like, you know, juicing, you know, like phase and it lasted a day and we never did it again because <laughs> it tasted so <laughs> bad. You need and to put some more pineapple, pine, whatever it is, in yeah. it, put, dump a bunch of pineapple juice. I, I swear know. that will change it <laughs> or something. Cause I'm like, I'm not doing it. Like I said, that's why I'm not a dieter because I just, if it doesn't taste yeah. good, I, I cannot mm-hmm. do that. Diet's not the right way. Anyway, it's like lifestyle. <laughs> like yeah. we've been talking this whole episode, right? It's yeah. lifestyle, whether, whatever yeah. you're working on, whatever you're eating. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'll eat anything. So I'm good. <laughs> Thank you so much, Debbie, for coming on to Ticket to Anywhere podcast. It has been so lovely to have you. Really quickly, tell everyone where they can find your beautiful self and all your services. Yeah, absolutely. So if you want to learn more about remote work, where you can find me, a ton of resources, you can go to theoffbeatlife.com. It has all the information there about the podcast. Um, And if you just want to reach out to me just to say hi, because you know, you want to chill or something online, because I don't know if we're ever going to meet in person, hopefully, you can email me at hello at theoffbeatlife.com. Yeah, that's about it. I'll hit you up, Debbie. Yay, Trizzy! <laughs> we, we should all try and meet one of these days. Yes, we should. I'm down. Yeah. Thank you again, Debbie. This was so inspiring for me. Just catch me on the Offbeat Life soon, y'all. Yes, for sure. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on another episode of the Ticket to Anywhere podcast. Don't forget to connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. If you love travel as much as we do, hit subscribe on our YouTube channel as well as anywhere you listen to podcasts such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Pocket Cast. Thank you all for your support so far. When you have the time, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. We love to hear your thoughts and feedback and it'll help others come across our episodes and hopefully be inspired to travel and adventure anywhere.